Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, no matter what time of day it is, we're glad you're here. Welcome to the Data View Show. This is episode number seven. I'm your host, Scott Hayes, lifetime IBM champion, IBM DB2 Gold consultant. And today I've got some really cool guys as our special guests. We have Thomas Tu and Mattias Funk. They're both executive directors at IBM and their Twitter handles are displayed there. Today we're gonna to talk about our favorite database, DB2, the AI database, and managing data efficiently in a hybrid cloud world. Thomas, how are you today? I'm very good, Scott, how are you doing? You have a good holidays? I, I had very nice holidays. Thank you very much. I had uh, too much eggnog, and uh, it, was, uh, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And Mattias, how are you today? I'm good, Scott. Um, glad to be here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, this is, this is going to be uh, a lot of fun. Now, you're both executive directors, and you had very long titles, which wouldn't fit on my slides. <laughs> So it, it kind of reminds me of when I had two bosses once upon a time. I, I reported to the VP of development. I reported to the VP of sales. And so I had a lot to do. And, and so tell me about your executive director roles and, and why you are important to IBM. Thomas. Sure. Um, yeah. So uh, Matisse and I are good partner uh, in one of the most important area in the IBM data and AI organization. Um, we are the specialist and the leader in the so-called the collect data uh, run in the AI ladder here. Basically, it's a foundation of how um, you put all the data together in multiple ways and in a very simplified way on how IBM present the portfolio um, with. Um, we are the foundation. Um, we are obviously talking about database, DB2, open source, and everything there. And I specializing in the in the analytic database side, which is really data warehouse, uh, big data, and all this area. Um, yeah, so um, I have been in the DB2 team for 20 years, and um, most of the time doing development and all kinds of role there. Um, about three years ago, I, I become the offering leader of the portfolio on the data warehouse side, and that is how uh, my history has been. So that is the area. Uh, it's a multi-billion dollar business in a hundreds of billion dollar market here is extremely important. Um, you can't really do anything until you got the data um, into your repository and everything. So there's a, we all know that the audience are pretty familiar with the technology here. A lot of things going on, expanding market, extremely important when the data is exploding. So that is why I'm so excited to be part of that. Matthias? Yeah, just to just to add another perspective to what Thomas just said, I think uh, you know the, the 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 fact that there are two executives over this uh, business segment, uh, if you will, is an expression of the, its size and complexity and the opportunity that IBM sees in this domain. Uh, like Thomas said, it's a it's a it's a multi-billion-dollar business for IBM. It's a uh, fifty-two billion-dollar business for uh, you know according to Gartner that is growing um, or is the fastest growing business despite its large size in the software industry and it has a complexity for anybody on the call who is familiar who is you know in this in this domain or in this space will know that data architectures are complex applications require fit for purpose repository types and uh, this in itself uh, translates into a level of complexity that is difficult to comprehend by you know um, a single brain a single mind if you will so together we i think we um, you know we complement each other well i'm focusing on uh, what i would call the operational database segment as well as the fast data uh, segment which is an emerging market uh, in the business and that uh, on the operational side it includes you know software offerings as well as cloud services and it includes the db2 uh, you know the db2 uh, offering as informix as well as open source database technologies like mongodb like like Postgres, as we make them available to our IBM clients. Well, very interesting. That's a, a great clarification of how you both have important roles and, and they're complementary. So I got a data warehouse on Thomas and transactional, more transactional with Matty F. That's 
it's oversimplified, but I think that's right. Thomas is is column organized. I'm row organized, Scott. <laughs> 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 and and on that note, I'll have a sip of beer. Okay, uh, I'm required by IBM to share some information with our audience. The opinions expressed are that of Scott Hayes and the show guests and do not necessarily reflect that of IBM Corporation or the IBM community. TV2 is a registered trademark of IBM, which is also a registered trademark. We make no claims to any marks belonging to anyone. And we are recording today. Replays will be publicly available, so mind your manners. Hopefully you're following us on the Data View Show. That's our Twitter handle. What's ahead? What we're gonna do today is a, a few news bits because we like to keep the DB2 community informed. And then we're gonna get uh, Thomas and Maddie Hassan talking about that amazing database, DB2. And we have some birthday wishes for a very special person in our IBM community. We'll ask a couple of polling questions and we'll have thank yous like we always do at the end. So upcoming shows, uh, if you haven't registered yet, Amber Crooks will be on 23rd of January talking about HADR in the real world. Uh, she's a graduate of the School of Hard Knocks and has a lot of information to share there. On the 6th of February, Buell Duncan is IBM's Vice President of Marketing. The theme of that show is Marketing Strategy and Puzzles. And while it may not be a very technical show, I think it might be the most fun and entertaining show that we're going to have of the entire season. Not that uh, Thomas and Matthias are entertaining, but uh, this, this guy, this is going to be fun talking about marketing and uh, figuring out what IBM is going to do in a marketing world. 13th of February, we're going to uh, talk about Cognos, AI and BI, augmented intelligence built into IBM Cognos Analytics. I think this is a very interesting topic because well, Cognos is one of the most client applications that can access data in DB2 and from other data sources. So uh, data and analytics, it's all very interesting. And on the 20th of February, Simon Lightstone, he's gonna talk about cloud, get started and make your business agile. And he's gonna teach us how to build a chatbot in 15 minutes. I think that sounds like a lot of fun. Some URLs we'd like you to visit. If you haven't become a member yet of the IBM community, you'll wanna to go to ibm.com slash community sign up, get involved. There's uh, discussion groups there. There's lots of blogs and articles and resources and people are chatting about all the IBM technology that they're using. It's very informative. And there's a, a new tool coming out. Uh, you can get it here. It's the DB2 Augmented Data Explorer. It's a cool little GUI that sits on top of DB2 and helps you learn things about your data, so check that out. The uh, DB2 samples are now published on GitHub. You can find them here. You can try out the new uh, DB2 data management console by going to ibm.biz slash DB2 console. And you can get a, a DB2 JSON book by visiting this URL. IDUG, I've been to every IDUG guys since the very first IDUG conference way back in the late 1980s. It's a great conference for the uh, community. Uh, registration is open for the North American conference in Dallas, Texas, a three and a half hour drive from my home. And you can save a lot of money if you register early. I think that's June 7th to 11th. Check out iDug and register and save some money. And a couple shows ago, uh, we had a guest on and I learned about this uh, tool called Auto AI. And there's the URL where you can uh, click there. Cloud Watson Studio Auto AI. It was really cool. You just uh, feed this like an Excel spreadsheet and it tells you things about your data that you didn't even know, or maybe you should have known. 
So that's that's worth checking out. Okay, normally this is uh, when we'd put our guests on the show and uh, let them let them talk to us. They've got a, a few presentation materials prepared, but they were mostly planning on having a conversational chat today. Fortunately, they also brought a slide deck with them that will stimulate questions from our audience. Since these guys are the leaders in our DB2 world, um, this is a good time to ask your questions. You, you can use that, go to webinar, question tool and throw your questions over and we'll get the questions out to these gentlemen so that they can uh, enlighten us and, and get your questions answered. So Thomas, I'm gonna make you the presenter and you can give us some introductory thoughts. Make presenter, click this button and you click that button and we'll see your screen again and your beautiful presentation. It is. Yep. yep, I think we go can to, see it. Yep, go to slideshow mode. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. So, um, can I start, Scott? You may. Uh, right now, all, all I see though is a, a blank screen. You don't have two monitors, do you? Oh, I don't have two monitors. I actually put myself in the presentation mode, but you're not seeing anything, right? Uh, not seeing anything. So we need to switch so the monitors back. around. Okay. So now I, I am, I'm actually not using, I'm just using my computer. Um, do you think the screen is too small that we cannot see it? Or is it good enough that if I stay in this mode, uh, is that okay? Or we have to have presentation mode? Uh, we don't have to have presentation mode. It just looks nicer. Okay. Um, our texts are pretty big, so hopefully you, you uh, people can still see it here. Um, Scott, from your point of view, is that clear still? I can see it well. Yes. Thomas. Okay. It's clear. It's okay. clear. Yeah, good. And also, there's actually a reason why I want to keep in this mode. Um, um, as offering leader, Matisse and I have a vote of slide deck, information you know we are talking about hundreds if not thousands of pictures and information on that and um, this is one of the more comprehensive depth on many many different topics and um, that is why for the purpose of this one hour i actually might jump around a little bit and that is why little column on the left hand side is gonna help. um so i i've been thinking about along with matthias about what to talk about uh, in this forum, I think I will be focused on a few few things here, and I and I will definitely leave more time for questions from the audience. Um, I want to talk a little bit about our strategy, what I see in the market when we talk to customer, and why we are doing what we're doing, which is really showing this page, and then I will pass it on to Matthias to really talk about the AI database on the DB2 part about what we're doing there. I think that's a really important part of that. And then we and then we want to spend a few minutes on the AI ladder and cloud path for data because um, Scott and I were chatting. Um, the new term from IBM after the Red Hat acquisition, the cloud pack, seems to be drawing a lot of um, uh, interest in the market about what that is and how is it related to my area in DB2 and databases and things like that and what exactly cloud pack is. So I want to make sure that the audience have some understanding about uh, what we're trying to do and why we think. The AI ladder uh, with, with collect data being the foundation that are so important for the modernization of the world in the future. Uh, so I want to spend some time on that, and then and then we'll leave it more time for questions. So um, let me get started from really what we are seeing right now. Right, traditionally on the data market, uh, DB2 Oracle, the traditional regional database, has been dominated in market in terms of data management on that, uh, be it transactional or data warehouse analytics has been around for a long time. But with, but with cloud, public cloud, um, a lot of new type of structure and structured data coming out uh, in the market, the new generation of people writing apps and generating data in many different places, and along with a lot of open source interest in terms of low cost database and some of the more specific purpose one, we are really seeing a pretty busy market right now in terms of people wanting to be 
able to do their job in that. But at the same time, when we talk to corporate customer and a lot of customers that we have been with for many years, the number one problem they're actually having before they can modernize anything is that, Thomas, Matthias, I have a bread and butter business today. I'm running that very well. It's generating, it's like printing money for me. I want to modernize, I want to use machine learning, I want to use AI. However, hey, I cannot just shut it down like that. I need to continue to be able to do that. I need to continue the technology. I need to have a very low cost free in terms of migrating. I don't want myself to be locked down into another technology suddenly. I want to have flexibility. I want some partners to work with me on a, on a portfolio in terms of not only um, easy to lend data in multiple apps, multiple um, form factors, uh, be it cloud, on-prem and everything like that, but also do it in a very similar way from a financial perspective, from a procurement perspective, from an actual usage perspective and everything. And that is really where we see our opportunity and that is really where we see our portfolio can be. When you look at this page here, right, where we are really coming from is really a common SQL engine in which the technology has been around and all of the audience here know, know very well. Um, we are continuing doing that, making sure that this common SQL engine is landing in multiple form factors, row based, column based, uh, structure and structure support also. And at the same time, in terms of cloud, uh, public cloud, private cloud, and, and, and on-prem. So those are really the key things that we want to make sure that a single offering will cover all of them and with a one engine experience so that your app will run everywhere. And at the same time, we are really partnering with a lot of these companies that we are looking at on the left-hand side on the bottom about how we're going to cater for the need of multiple workload multiple customers need because um, many banks and other industry are telling me that some of the new app because of data, because of other reason, they want to use some other databases uh, like Mongo, like EDB, um, some of them are really more fitting to the new generation of users. So that is really what we've been doing, right? Growing our own database in terms of technology, but also partnering with the people so that the single portfolio, single procurement will allow you to really be very flexible at doing it in everywhere that you want. And that is really has been our strategy for the last couple of years. And we've been very, very aggressive on that. Uh, some of the really major player uh, like the Hadoop world, Hortonworks Caldera, uh, in the database world, Mongo, uh, Enterprise DB and every, everyone we've been partnering with them along with DB2 to really have a full picture for everybody to really fit their need. And that is really the strategy will come about. And, and along the same time, bringing all these things on the cloud, right? You know, the, our SaaS customers um, is really growing. And let me flash a little bit of screen here in slide four here. Um, there are many brands um, on that. Uh, some of them are on Amazon, some of them are IBM Cloud, but these are all DB2 or DB2 warehouse on cloud customers. And all these brands are actually using production wise about what um, what they're what they're doing with the with our products. So these are really some of the key things that we've been able to do. Um, I think, but whatever we do here, our core is really what we have been doing in DB2. And we're not really stopping in DB2 and we're really doing a lot more on that. So um, when it comes to AI database, which is something that we have been talking about and, and working on, uh, Matthias, if you can spend a few minutes to talk about the AI database and how and how we're doing that, and let me make sure that I have the AI database slide. Yeah, hey Thomas, uh, just before we go there, can you stay on this slide for a moment? Sure, and, go ahead. Um, uh, before I, before Connor? I, yes, guys, I heard you mention money a little bit ago, Thomas, and it's been said that data is the new gold. Would you like <laughs> to comment on that? Matthias, do you want me to do that, or? You Go ahead. Data is the new gold. True or false? Well, data Why? is the new gold. That certainly translates also into um, a revenue opportunity for IBM, but equally and if even uh, probably even more so for our clients in terms of realizing new business value in their organizations, right? And um, above and beyond that, just to um, say that saying is an expression of the the value that uh, you know that uh, organizations can derive from insights that they derive from from the data that they have in house or combining the data with public data sets and third party data sets in a way that was not possible a few years ago 
right? So the explosion of data, but also the ability to bring large volumes of data now together across heterogeneous, um, you know, uh, data services and break down these silos um, enables new use cases and it unlocks new business value. And and, I've, and that's why I wanted to ask you, Thomas, to stay on this slide because I think it's important that uh, people understand or the audience understands why we are why we are expanding beyond, if you will, the core DB2 franchise, um, and why we want to offer that one-stop shopping experience to our clients uh, from IBM. And when I say one-stop shopping, I really don't mean just that procurement experience, right? But I mean an experience that starts perhaps with discovery and procurement, but goes down to deployment, use, management, uh, and support of these different data services. Um, the complexity uh, is somewhat that, that clients deal with is somewhat uh, by design, right? They want best of breed technology for certain workloads and use cases and on the other side they there is a constant strive to to reduce that complexity uh, unify the experience in the way uh, different personas interact with those uh, with that architecture or those technologies yeah. and that's what what we are all about right it's about it started with the common sql engine on db2 because that's certainly much easier but it ex then then you know with something that we don't control in terms of the code, but it expands now into a broader ecosystem of data services and is an expression and a commitment about uh, delivering a unified experience across the uh, different deployment models. So think about private cloud consumption with, with Kubernetes and OpenShift, a legacy or I would say, uh, let's say classic on-premises deployment, bare metal deployments of these data services, as well as uh, public cloud services and offering application developers as well as DBAs um, um, a, a unified experience in, in engaging with and managing these these heterogeneous data services. Hey, right. Matthias, our, our mutual friend Stuart has suggested that I ask you how to correctly pronounce your name. Okay. <laughs> no, Matthias is, is pretty close, so you are you are good, Scott. You're doing a much better job than than uh, than he does. I see. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, th this might be uh, a question for Thomas. Sure. Uh, what the heck? What the heck is happening to Natiza? There, there was like Natiza, wonderful hardware, nice acquisition by IBM, and now we have a a, a new appliance, and and now. IIAS or something like that, and then now there's um, maybe a new direction that's coming. So, help me understand the the Natiza direction. Yeah. So um, I so I actually plan to talk about that, and um, when we talk about that, um, there's a there's no way we don't talk about cloud path for data, and also the AI ladder, and also the Red Hat acquisition. So, um, um, pardon me if the story is a little bit longer than than a than a you know one minute answer, but let me talk a little bit about that too. Okay, so right, yeah, if you if you're gonna cover it later, I I don't want to derail you. Yeah, so um, I would like to cover it. Like I would like to cover it about what we have done in the past six months in terms of that and why we see the opportunity that we that we that we have been doing and what is that means to our portfolio. So I want to make sure that I'm able to talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. I will definitely address that question. All right. Yeah, so, well, carry on. What, what else? What else do you want to talk about next? So I think before we talk about Cloud Path, I think um, yes, if you don't mind, talk a little bit about about the AI data. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. But but I, I was still not done actually. Uh, there's another topic that I'm okay. I wanted to touch on, um, and uh, I don't see any questions in the in the um, in the uh, the webinar tool. Um, I don't know whether people already raised some questions, but if not, then I encourage you to do so now because I really was hoping for more of an interactive dialogue than than leaving all the questions to the end. Um, so Scott, I don't Very know whether you, whether you can double check whether everything works fine, but um, look forward to to have more of an in, uh, you know a dialogue based on questions that come in from the audience. Um, so one more one point that I wanted to hit on here before we move to forward is 
um, when you look at the the, the 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 set of open source technologies that we are offering right then all of them exist in the form of a community version right a true open source technology um, but and often what we call open source is actually now is actually somewhat commercial source as well in the form that in a, by, expressed by other ISVs trying to monetize on those open source technologies by by adding extensions to it by hardening it by investing in security and and other let's say non-functional aspects that that uh, make the, the the community source or open source offering more uh enterprise ready right and i um and i get a question sometimes so why are you doing this and i answered it to some degree right but why are you uh, what is the IBM approach and how is it different from other competitors uh, or other cloud providers like AWS? And um, the answer is, well, we, we certainly have a multi-cloud, hybrid cloud strategy. We we want to help our clients avoid login to a specific cloud by building applications against proprietary cloud services that prevent you from moving that application or solution stack uh, easily to another uh, deployment target, right? And OpenShift is is probably the best, and and the uh, the the partnership and the acquisition of Red Hat is probably the best uh, a proof point of that, right? But it goes way beyond that. And for for our domain here, uh, we chose to um, in, to move forward with a strategy that um, that delivers these open source technologies to our enterprise clients through partnerships with the market leaders. The, or arguably the market leaders on the respective technology. So MongoDB Inc. with MongoDB, um, EDB uh, with Postgres, um, others, uh, Cloudera on Hortonworks, uh, sorry, Cloudera on uh, Hortonworks before that on Hadoop, and then now certainly um, there are others in the pipe uh, that we can't necessarily talk about right now. Um, but um, But I think the difference is that we don't want to just take that open source um, customize it and and just not and don't give back to the community as some other vendors might be doing it. We also don't want to just make that available on a single cloud or a sing, in a single form factor, and 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 teaming up with those uh, market leading ISVs helps us deliver on that multi cloud um, promise and also helps us deliver a, a differentiated uh, capability uh, both expressed by those. Uh, in, um, if you will, proprietary elements that these ISVs add, um, but also expressed by the competence that these companies have in supporting enterprise clients, right? So the client is not all by himself using open source, then open source code base. So I wonder, Scott, whether you have uh, any, any uh, whether you want to poke on this a little bit, whether you have any questions on that, uh, whether that makes sense to you and the audience, but um, I find this an important differentiator relative to how other uh, competitors go to market. Yeah, that's that's some good information. I, I'm looking at the question queue now, and uh, I guess some people are maybe on their phones and they're having a hard time seeing the slides. And so the, the request is, I understand Thomas wants to uh, be in this mode with PowerPoint. Uh, maybe we could toggle back and forth between slideshow mode and then you can jump out uh, to this mode to, to navigate your slides. That's some feedback from the audience as they'd like to see full screen, if you can accommodate that. Um, Absolutely. Somebody, in, Absolutely. somebody in the audience? Sure. I see the discussions happening in DB2 LUW, but is this for DB2 ZOS as well? I mean, DB2. Zos, yeah, that's Zos, Zos, whatever. The the common SQL engine does does that play with DB2Z well? Because as long as I've been involved in DB2, uh, it seems there's always been some differences in the, in the SQL for the engines on Zos and distributed. Who's got that question? Well. Well, from my understanding, what, is, what what is the reach of the common SQL engine? 
So the focus on the common signal engine has been on the distributed side and with that also on the, the DBAS offerings. So fully managed DB2 service on IBM Cloud or AWS. Um, there is certainly a large overlap uh, in, or in, in you know, consistent uh, functionality that exists on DB2 and CUS and DB2 distributed. And there are also some new um, integration points that we can talk about in a minute, right? That, that uh, help bring these two worlds together. But yes, there are differences and those differences uh, uh, mostly exist for historical reasons, right? And uh, they have just not been a, a priority today to uh, get rid of them. So there is, I mean, if you code against DB2, then, and, and uh, you know, you, you still need to know what you're doing if you want to uh, ensure portability uh, between DB2, LUW, and DB2 and Z. That's for sure, but I mean, uh, if you think about a scenario where you want to migrate an application from DB2 on Z to DB2 uh, distributed or DB2 uh, LUW running on, on Z Linux, for instance, right? I mean, we have been investing quite a bit to uh, make that possible. And in my experience, it's not so much about the, um, if you read the language, uh, the SQL gamut, but it's more about perhaps um, consistency in working behavior, um, uh, the availability of certain uh, configurations of DB2 that the client would require as he moves in a workload. Uh, think of DB2 and C OS as, uh, and it's high availability versus DB2 pure scale, right? Pure scale is available if you, or is, if you will, the equivalent on the distributed platform, but it has not been available on C Linux. And that's, for instance, something that um, I'm looking forward to, to launch actually uh, in the first half of this year. So, so there are there are some That's gaps excellent. that we are, that we keep closing. I, I've I've worked on some of those projects of people that want to uh, take what they were running on the mainframe and run it on the distributed platform. That's that's actually the first project that I did in uh, in the mid '90s was rehosting a DB2 CICS COBOL application to the distributed platform. So that I'm, I'm glad you're making effort there, and I, I also see advances where, uh, like storage groups, were introduced in DB2 LUW in version 11, and we had storage groups on the mainframe forever. So I, I can see how uh, we're bringing the family together more and more. That's a good thing. And Scott, while you're on this point, there is. Um a new capability on the horizon called data. We, we call it data gate. I'm not sure this will be the official name, um, but it is, um, it is uh, you know, an evolution of the, the, the synchronization, real-time synchronization and, and replication technology that we are using under the covers with DB2Z and IDAA. For those people who are familiar with this, the analytical backend accelerator for DB2Z, we are leveraging that tech to basically allow our clients to establish a real-time, always in sync, uh, kind of copy of, of uh, a subset of the data they have on db2c on a db2 distributed instance. Um, so, so that type of mirroring helps people offload certain work, you know, workloads or, or ensure that some new um, New applications and workloads don't interfere with uh, mission critical workloads that currently or already run against db2 and c uh, i find that very exciting so in that kind of uh, replication and synchronization experience certainly also requires uh, consistency right between the the, the source and the target uh, um, and that is so that is something we, we we plan to to also release in the near future Okay, uh, Stuart says you have a new title as of today. Have you been promoted from executive director? Or are you now an IBM <laughs> god? What happened? Um, yeah, I mean, not exactly, um, but um, that's that's right. And um, so going forward, my focus will be actually um, even more on AI capabilities and how we leverage um, um, technology that we have in our DB2 family and in our hyper data management portfolio in a solution context. 
So, I mean, this is really a bit of a tangent. If you want to go there, I'm happy to, but I warn you, um, this, <laughs> this requires more than two, two sentences to explain. Right? It's, a, it's very much about um, leveraging the an information architecture that, uh, you know, this portfolio is, is a part of to um, help clients realize uh, next generation AI solutions. And my focus will be on delivering or creating these solutions in the context of uh, of IT and, and targeting the CIO as a uh, as a persona and as an organization as our our target audience so um, help them get a better grip on managing their IT infrastructure managing the the business service levels that that I expected from them by bringing different capabilities uh, including database capabilities or data warehousing capabilities and event uh, event management capabilities together with domain specific um, machine learning models and um, intelligence that uh, you know gives people a better experience than what they are able to get today with traditional tools. So were you promoted to a distinguished engineer or something? What's the new title? No, there is. Um, I haven't thought about a new title. Um, I will make that up as I go. Right now, I'm <laughs> I can't offer you a new title, but no, it's uh, you know promotions don't necessarily work that way. So in my case, it's uh, it's just uh, you know a new assignment that um, I'm looking forward to because it's um, it's 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 a kind of a startup um, because it's an it's uncharted territory for us. So uh, starting this up as a new business uh, segment for for the company is, uh, is pretty exciting. All right, uh, let's see. How about uh, somebody in the audience is asking if there will be any slides that we can share from today. Uh, do you guys wanna send me a, a PDF of slides that I can share in the replay blog or sure. will we not have slides today? Sure, sure. I think um, these slides can be shared. Yes, I can be shared okay. in public. So we, we, we will, I will send it to you, Scott, at the end of the... Okay, send it to me and I'll make it available to our audience. That's great. And so to answer the question, we will share the slides in the replay blog, which will be available within 24 hours. Go to dataviewshow.com slash news, and that's where you'll find the replay blog when it is made available. Okay, well, the, the, the questions are coming in. You guys asked for questions. And so we're getting questions. Uh, somebody says, I'm working on a migration project. We're planning to move from ZOS to IBM Cloud. I need some recommendations from you, like how to estimate between compute and storage. Um, so, yeah, so, so I, I guess the first question is, so are you moving to a... Um, to a fully managed uh, service, or are you moving to infrastructure as a service and then deploy DB2 yourself? Um, I think that's that certainly influences uh, the direction in which we would further talk about this. But but presuming um, so presuming that it is the you know it is uh, DBAS would be the target, right? Then. Um, then I think uh, I think uh, mostly I mean if, if you think about how much storage uh, do you need uh, the way our um, our services are exposed and you can consume them if you look at how if you're configuring compute versus storage um, it all uh, is user data oriented so you don't have to worry about uh, metadata right or uh, you know other other types of data that are typically taken care of by the administrator, like, you know, log, log files and, and, and space for log files and stuff like this. All of that is taken care of. You don't have to factor that into your estimate or projection about uh, how much data to acquire. It's, it's all about user data. And, and in terms of the uh, compression that you can expect from the, the cloud service, it's, since it's all based on the same common SQL engine, that compression um, uh, should be on par with what you experience on the on the on premises side um, between DB2 on ZOS and DB2 distributed. Uh, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure whether it's exactly the same, 
but it should be um, it should be certainly in the same ballpark. And Scott, you might actually know better than me. Um, but uh, my 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 answer would be yeah, it should be pretty straightforward. And I apologize for the noise here. Uh, it should be pretty straightforward to to map um, to map at least on the storage dimension from what you have today on DB2 on COS to uh, what you have in on DB2 on cloud. And then regarding compute, that really I think that really uh, requires some experimentation. Um, or consultation with an IBM expert who has done this. I'm not, right now I can't think of, we certainly don't have a tool that out of the box uh, provides some guidance uh, on this. Hey, Matthias, it sounds like you actually are in a bar. There's like a large crowd in the <laughs> I wish that was true, Scott. There are certainly no drinks here. There's no beer. Yeah. And, um, you. <laughs> no, actually, it's tragic I that there's no that. beer. Yeah, so the, the question asker is saying uh, pass to DB2WOC. We are taking PAAS, DB2WOC. Too many acronyms for me. Thomas, that's your, that's your, that's your territory. Yeah, yeah so, uh, so, so Scott, I'm, I'm familiar with the product, uh, DB2 Warehouse on Cloud. That is the long form of that. Uh, but what was the question? Warehouse on cloud, okay. Yeah. Acronyms. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. So um, I actually want to add to um, Matthias' answer just now uh, for the gentleman who asked the question or for the audience who asked the question just now, is that the reason, the good thing about cloud is that you don't have to acquire like a hardware that all the capacity you want is very flexible, elastic, and we build in server and storage elasticity there. So that means you can start small. We have a lot of customers who start with a smaller data estate and keep on growing, uh, growing onto that and when, when they need it. And that is really the strength of, uh, of cloud. And so that, you know, you know, let's say you have a whatever terabyte of data, that does not mean you need to start on the first day to pay for all the storage that you allocate, like you buy a new machine on cloud. You can always start small and experiment it, uh, understand how portable the, the application will be with the common SQL engine. And once you're ready, then you can expand it by paying more, subscribing more. And so that is really what the strength of cloud is. And those are the building functionality for DB2 on cloud and DB2 warehouse on cloud. And that a lot of customers are enjoying right now. Well, that is that is one of the, the promises or good thing about cloud is you can have Absolutely. all the resource that you need. It's just like the electricity in your house. And, and if you, you just exactly. keep plugging stuff in until you blow the circuit breaker, which probably isn't going to happen in the cloud. And you get to pay for what you use, which is why I've always said tuning is important, because if you tune, then you use less resource in the cloud and conceivably be charged less. I'm going to take the presentation back and take, oh, give you, let you guys drink your coffee or tea or your beer. And uh, I want to shout out a happy 21st birthday to Stuart Littell. The data view show is made possible thanks to this very funny young man. Uh, one of his many roles at IBM is working with the IBM community and the IBM community management. And uh, he's, he's the one last summer, summer of last year that actually helped make uh, this data view show webinar series possible. So guys, uh, would you join me in singing happy birthday to Stuart? Absolutely. Can we, can we do this? Okay, on yeah. three. One, two, three. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Stuart. Happy birthday to you. To you. Yay. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's ask our audience a, a polling question. Yeah, Scott. Um, Scott, Scott. 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 Thomas here. Um, do you mind? I spend three minutes just to make sure I round out the cloud for data and the teaser question because uh, we talked about it earlier in the call. I want to make sure I don't leave the question hanging there because that's quite important for all of us. If I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to circle right back to you. I'm going to ask a polling question and then I'll, I'll get you back on. 
Thank you. So we're asking people getting uh, asking people now how long they've been working with DB2 LUW. I imagine we're going to have a number of what we call seasoned professionals in our audience. Some people are new to it. Others have been working with it for a very long time. We usually allow uh, 30 seconds for people to respond or until 80% cast a vote. And people are contributing now. You know, we, we set a new record for our registrations on today's show. So that's very exciting. A lot of people interested in what you guys have to say. Closing the poll and sharing the results. So we've the, the, the top category is 38% over 15 years, and the second highest is zero to two years. So that's really encouraging. That means we've got some newcomers to the platform, and that's good to see uh, people coming over. That's really good news. Okay, I'm gonna hide that, and then I'm going to make Thomas our presenter again, so he can answer that question about the cloud packs and the TISA. Click that button, Thomas, and we'll be able to see your screen. Remember to go to slideshow mode if you can for the people that are on their phones. Yep, uh, sorry, slideshow mode is still showing blank right that is the technical problem yeah. that we're having yeah okay yeah so sorry about that guys i will make it as big as possible okay um so just want to spend a couple of minutes to really talk about cloud proper data uh i got a lot of people asking me questions about what it is and why we're doing that what the that. heck is a cloud pack <laughs> so, so okay so in a very sim in a very simplest form cloud pack is the platform after we bought uh, Red Hat, we acquired Red Hat, and we know that OpenShift is going to be a common Kubernetes infrastructure that we're going to use in private cloud and public cloud for all the customer who has been committed to this platform. We need to make sure that the whole data modernization part is built on top of it. So instead of um, building individual products like DB2, Watson Knowledge Catalog, Watson Studio, all the things separately onto OpenShift, we put them together into a single product and a single offering called Cloud Pack for Data. And that is really a strategic direction of, of data AI team in IBM. Basically, Cloud Pack for Data uh, have two form factor offering. One is a software offering and one is a system hardware software integration offering in such a way that once you acquire it, you will have all part of the um, AI ladder here, collect, organize, analyze, and infuse at your fingertips and at your choice of deploying the components to accomplish not only collecting the data, but cleanse it, organize it, and also doing machine learning and analyzing on top of it. It's all in one package, and that is why it's called Cloud Pack for Data. You land this on OpenShift, which is part of it already in a package. You can use public cloud, private cloud, and all these uh, infrastructure of your choice uh, to do this. And inside Cloud Pack for Data, um, it's almost like an Apple App Store. You have multiple software that you can use, and obviously DB2, DB2 Warehouse, some of the open source database we have there are part of it already. It's up to you about how you deploy it as if you are just using the app in your phone. So these are the key things that we do, and that is what Cloud Pack for Data is. And why is it related to Natisa? And here's a story I want to tell. So before we have Cloud Pack for Data and the Red Hat acquisition, uh, we continue the appliance uh, journey by merging the Natisa engine into DB2 and form, form the integrated analytics system on that. So it has enjoyed quite a bit of success in the market. We have multiple customers migrated into the new generation, enjoying faster performance and better concurrency and all the things that DB2 Blue and DB2 Column Store has to offer. However, we also have some customers saying that they really love the Natisa engine. They really want to continue doing it they want to have some really quick migration. They just want to switch it on and open it and use it and things like that. And we didn't really have a lot of option for that before the Red Hat acquisition on Cloud Pack. But once we have Cloud Pack, about seven months ago, when we start thinking about it, hey, this is really a place where you can put as many choices of software into that. So why don't we, for those customers, why don't we bring back the Natisa engine 
into that as a, as a part of the software here. And that is what we did. And in the Kafka for data system form factor, which is the hardware software integration, because you need uh, that, you know, destiny configuration of hardware and, and tuning on that, we rolled out the performance server, which is part of the Kafka for data family in such a way that we actually put the Netisa engine back into that. And since then we have a portion of a customer continue the Netisa journey using the exact engine without any migration, just back up, restore the, the database onto that and continue doing that. At the same time, in the other part of Cloudflare for Data System, while enjoying the database engine in the teaser, they use data science, they use Watson to, uh, to do the data, they even use Spark and other things to access the data to do that. So that becomes best of both worlds. And that is really what the teaser story has been. Um, I know that the DB2 uh, direction and this becoming a little bit confusing in the past couple of months, but I think it's not all clarified now because Cloudflare for Data is really the all-in-one platform, and that is how the, the teaser engine in the cell got revived into the market, and that some of our customers really, really love it and really get, get up and running very quickly to enjoy what they have done before. So that is really uh, try to clarify the model, and we see an opportunity in Cloudflare for Data that we can able to bring back multiple options of the software offering that we have had a lot of success before, and that's exactly what we did. So hopefully that helps some question about where we are with Netiza. Um, living and well, very active. A lot of customers trying to do this to move to other competitor, not successful. This is really the ultimate solution to continue that journey. So a cloud pack is a bundle of goodies. I yep. buy the cloud pack and then I have access to all these things. Does it come with Amazon Alexa? <laughs> Well, there are some there are some natural language things that they're doing there, absolutely. Uh, but Alexa, probably not. It will be a probably a different name. But uh, yeah, but natural language is definitely part of the things that we are thinking of also. You've got the Amazon Web Services there, so it just it's it's a natural segue that I should be able to ask Alexa questions about my data. <laughs> yeah. So somebody, yeah, but somebody in the audience said we talk about Natiza. What about Informix? What's what's happening with Informix? Where is that going? So that's actually a good keyword in this context of cloud pack for data because Informix. Um, the, I got several times the question: What what happens with Informix in this context? How can I modernize Informix workloads um, in a, if you will, you know, in in this hybrid cloud or private cloud world and uh, Kubernetes world? The answer is. We are actively working with the Informix development team on uh, microservicing, quote unquote, right, and, and, and containerizing Informix, uh, and to a point where it is an, it becomes an integrated uh, and first class tenant on OpenShift and in the context of Cloudflare for Data. So, so when you 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 described Cloudflare for Data like a, a, pro, a bundle of product capabilities, Scott, it's actually much more, right? It is also a platform that we want every capability uh, to adhere to in terms of uh, the platform management services, certain uh, certain you know standards that uh, that we expect to make it easy for people to stitch individual services together. So when I talk to you know uh, some of our large clients, their CTOs, they would say the hardest part in my for, in my daily life is. Uh, stitching, you know, individual capabilities and components together to respond to new business requirements. So a database with a kind of governance capability or an analyze capability like Watson Studio or something else, right? Or Cognos, a reporting capability, BI capability. Um, the platform promise is that this becomes much easier, uh, gets automated uh, to, a to the degree possible, becomes intelligent where appropriate, and and therefore advances and delivers a self-service experience to the ultimate end user that we are all serving. Right. So taking IT out of the equation as much as possible uh, to scale uh, to scale the business uh, by empowering these end users. That's the the the, the vision and the promise of of Cloudback for Data. And uh, Informix is meant to be a core tenant there. And then so don't want to work around the question. So. This is just one of the two strategic directions that we see on Informix. So make that, make Informix modernize it in that context, um, 
and then also uh, focus on Informics as, besides being a core database, focusing uh, on the consumption in the context of embed use cases. I right? think set top boxes, anything that requires a very lightweight database that can be always on zero touch maintenance, uh, those attributes, Informix is very good at it. And someone in the audience asked, does the Cloud Pack run on specific hardware? Can it run on a Z machine? So we both are not uh, representing Cloud Pack for Data as offering managers, right? But um, I think, yes, Z is, is um, a, a destination. I don't, I mean, it will be C Linux. And I think it is supported today. Thomas, keep me honest, right? But there are, I mean, there are, there, this is a is a journey rather than a uh, you know a static uh, statement because as the platform grows and as additional capabilities get microservices and become available there, they all have to then be ported um, and that's not just true for for Z that is also true for Power right so between Intel Power and Z uh, our our commitment as IBM is we want to support all these three platforms as strategic platforms uh, but you know especially when you think about some open source technologies. Uh, that the platform is working with or built on, um, they are typically coming from an Intel world, right? And uh, there is some latency, quote unquote, in the process to make them available on these other platforms. Wonderful. And uh, you wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the AI and DB2. And the right, just, just two minutes, because I think that was part of the title of the session, so I didn't want to miss miss uh miss out on it um so for what does ai mean from a db2 perspective right there are two perspectives actually there is an outside in perspective that means how do we make how do we help people build intelligent applications with data that lives in db2 and then the second perspective is an inside out perspective where, where i would say how can i employ ai intelligence to make db2 smarter and simplify or automate mundane tasks that the DBA is dealing with today. So the DBA can spend more time on, you know, more complex, um, you know, complex activities like, I don't know, modeling, uh, you know, the, the database or uh, serving new application requirements. And, um, and this chart is just an expression of some of the, uh, if you will, the characteristics that we are working on. It's, it's uh, some of it became available initially with the 11.5 release, um, and they are certainly subject to further enhancements and extensions. Some of them are work in progress, not released yet. Right, but you mentioned earlier the ADE, uh, the Augmented Data Explorer uh, capability that actually lives uh, somehow outside of DB2. That is an expression of that outside in perspective. So giving data scientists who not necessarily know SQL inside out, um, a tool that allows them to explore the data that sits in DB2 um, in a natural language, using natural language as an interface and also visualizing data in real time as they uh, interrogate the data set. So it's pretty cool and I encourage everybody to do so. You talked about it as a GUI, it's actually much more than a GUI. It's a, it has a natural language capability, so it has AI, is it is an AI infused already using Watson Tech and um and it has that you know it has that combined uh, uh, real, uh capability to serve the 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 data the data scientists to any uh any uh user that does not necessarily know sql and on the as an an example for that inside out uh perspective the machine learning optimizer initially released with 11.5 um in tech review and focusing on some simple joints right is an expression of that using ai to to overcome some limitations that are inherently uh, inherent with the cost based optimizer that is, uh, is is depending on how good your statistics are right we use the ml optimizer to overcome some of the flaws or limitations that that come with the cost based optimization design and we we continue to invest in enhancements that allow us to apply this this uh, feature to uh, more complex joints as we go, right? Both applying to uh, transactional workloads as well as analytical workloads. Back to you. Very good. We're, we're back to the top of the hour.
Thomas, do you have anything else you'd like to add or share? Um, no, Scott, I, I think this is really good. I think there's a few of the key questions that we answer. i um, love to have more time and, um, you know, um, feel free to, if you want us to <laughs> do that again. Um, I love this forum and um, it's pretty cool. Well, next time we'll actually have to have beer in front of us when, when we do this. I think that would be a lot of fun. What's the next conference that you guys are going to? You're going to be at IDOG? Are you going to THINK? Well, THINK, think for sure. Um, any IDOG, I think, I think I'll be there. So um, we are going to meet in person. And uh, yeah, there will be time during this year or even the first quarter that we're going to meet. Absolutely. Yeah, the next conference is actually happening in just two weeks from now in Vienna. It's more of an IBM internal conference to kick to kickstart a year for sales in Europe and also our business partners in Europe. So uh, maybe some of the people in the audience are actually going there. Uh, but that's that's more of an IBM event, if you will. But okay. if you are going there, if you are on the phone, then then reach out to us. We will both be there. End of January. Very good. Because I, I heard that you guys both have credit cards with very large credit limits. <laughs> so there's, there's going to be a lot of action at the bar. <laughs> uh, I'll throw one more question out and then I'll, I'll take control back. Um, one of the members of our audience is, is particularly curious and asking a lot of questions. Is a package for machine learning and AI to perform analytics on the real-time data sets like random forest logistic regression? Do we have trail account with cloud pack? Just repeat the end. Do we have what on cloud pack? Do we have trail account with cloud pack? I'm, I'm not sure what a trail account is. Yeah, me neither. Let's, but, let's uh, look at the first part of the question. Is the package for machine learning and AI to perform analytics on the real-time data sets like random forest logistic regression? Does he mean yeah. free trial? Like, uh, I, I think he might mean free trial of cloud for data and those capabilities. Maybe that's what he's asking. Yeah, I mean, random forest is, is one of the standard um, algorithms, right, that is uh, certainly available with Cloudpack for Data and the Watson Studio uh, Watson tool chain that comes with Cloudpack for Data that allows you to develop and, and operationalize and manage these models. Um, there is also capability within our uh, the collect layer, right? So our data management set of capabilities that allow somebody to push down um, the execution of the, or scoring of an MM model or even uh, training activities into the database or data warehouse um, to make that more efficient, right? That processing more efficient, more resource efficient, but also minimize uh, latency or, you know, the, avoid round trips to pull data out of a database to make it available for training. Um, all that exists today. And um, thanks for asking the question because, you know, people forget sometimes, but by, by pushing down the anal analytics, um, not just helps with resource consumption, but also improves the quality of these models because you can typically make them um, available to a larger set of data. Uh, think about large data warehouse um, footprints, right? A, a larger training set, if you will, that therefore leads to um, a better quality of a model out of the gate. Excellent. So I'm going to make myself the presenter again. My screen, we've already asked uh, one polling question. We've been taking a lot of questions from our audience. And so it's time to thank our audience for being here. Lots of lovely and handsome faces in the audience today. Thank you, Thomas and Mattias for being our guests. Thank you to our sponsor, the IBM community. Make sure you've become a member and get involved there. Replays and show news are going to be at dataviewshow.com slash news. And a lot of people have been asking about a PDF. Thomas will send me a PDF and we will make it available in the replay blog. You'll find that here. Okay. 
have a last question for our audience. Uh, did you learn anything today? We always ask people if they learned anything because sharing knowledge is the entire purpose of the show and growing the community, sharing knowledge, and it's, uh, it's good stuff. At least I understand better now what a cloud pack is because my previous experience with uh, packs was like a six pack of beer. <laughs> and, 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 and if I go to this store, uh, my store will actually sell some some six packs that have a variety in it. So I can sample the amber and the lager and, and the dark ale. And that's kind of what a cloud pack is. It's, it's a, a little bundled kit with uh, different things in it. They, they do exactly. They give you choice. So there we go. Now we can explain it to people that, that the cloud pack is like a six pack of beer, uh, but better. <laughs> okay. We're going to close this poll, share the results. 97% uh, of our very good looking audience today said that they learned something from you guys. So that's terrific. Uh, I'll give, I'll give you each uh, 30 seconds more, and then we're going to wrap up. Matty, just want to say thank you for seconds. having us. Okay. Yeah, and uh, thank uh, thanks you. for having us. And, uh, we'd love to do this again, and um, thank you. All right, then we will do it again. We'll bring you guys back. You're a lot of fun to chat with. Okay, uh, put on the show music, and that's when we say goodbye. Thanks everybody for being here. Had a lot of fun. Thank you guys. That's a wrap.